Hi, welcome to my channel, Happy Girl AK. Um, today's share is going to be about living within your means. This is the first video in a series of videos I'm going to be making about financial management. I'm not a financial advisor, however, I am good friends with quite a few people who are really good at wealth building, they understand um, investment portfolios, different things like that, and I will, um, I will create some collab videos with those types of individuals in the future. Okay, so let's get started. So first off, I want to start with the basics. All right, so to start off, if you're going to live within your means, the first thing you want to do is try to create a budget. In order to create a budget, what you have to do is understand how much money you're taking home. So when I say how much money you're taking home, I mean after the taxes have been deducted, um, you know, what is your paycheck, the dollar amount that is being either direct deposited into your account, or if you're getting some type of paper form of check, you know, you want to figure out what the monthly amount is that you're taking home. And if you have the type of job, let's say you have an hourly wage and it varies, um, you'll want to kind of get a gauge maybe over a three to six month um, time period to figure out about um, approximately how much you're bringing in every month. Okay, so the tips I'm going to be giving you are tips that are for creating a conservative budget, all right? So you have your take-home pay, you figured out how much you're bringing home on a monthly basis. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take care of your mortgage, you want to take care of your rent. Now, ideally, and here's a formula for conservative budgeting, your mortgage or your rent should not be more than 30% of your take-home pay. That is a nice amount. In some cases, that may not be enough to get the type of home that you're wanting to get at that time. But what you can do is you can look for roommates to kind of help um, split the cost of the mortgage of the rent or the rent. And then once you get to a place to where you've increased your finances, then you can go ahead and upgrade. All right, so the next thing is you want to understand how much you're spending on groceries and I would say again um, you want to gauge maybe over a three to six month time period just to gain a really good understanding and what this does as well is it helps you understand if you're being frivolous with your spending when you're buying groceries um, one thing you might want to consider is downloading apps I know a lot of grocery stores have apps where they show you um, coupon deals where you could get um, you know, triple the amount on your coupons and things like that. So that's another way, but you definitely want to get an average or an approximate average of how much you need to spend on groceries. All right, so this next tip is, and you probably heard this a lot, you want to pay yourself. Ideally, if you can pay yourself 10%, then do that. Every time you get paid, pay yourself 10% of your check. If you're not able to do that, maybe start off with 5%, but you want to make sure that you are rewarding yourself some of that income every time you get paid. Okay, so next you want to put 10% into your savings account. Now for some people, 10% at this time may be too much. If it is, try, um, um, depositing 5% and if you're not able to do that well maybe you start by with every paycheck you transfer over $10 to your savings account I would use increments of 10 because that way you can really see the increase of your balance every month when you're depositing that money over so if you're depositing $10 into your savings account um, twice a month, right? So every time you get paid, if you get paid twice a month, um, that would be what $240 at the end of the year over a 12 month period. And so I just think that when you're able to see that increase happening, you get more excited and you're more inclined to put or to continue putting money into your savings account. So start where you are. If you're not able to um, transfer over 10% of your pay, that's okay, but just start with something. 
Okay, so the next one I'm going to talk about really is super important. All right, so a lot of us, most of us adults, we need to have transportation. Either we want to buy a car or if you're taking public transportation or what have you, right? So what I'm going to speak to right now is if you are considering shopping to buy a car, I would say you want your monthly payments to be no more than 10% of your take home pay. Now, if you're able to, if you want to go above and beyond that, I would say you wouldn't want to go more than maybe 15% of your take home pay, but if we're doing the conservative budget, I would say 10% of your take home pay will probably be the most reasonable. Okay, so the next few items that we have left here is gas. You have to put gas in your car. And then um, let's say, you know, you're paying for rent or mortgage somewhere, right? So you need to pay for gas, you need to pay for electric. I know some places, if you're renting, they may include electric um, in some cases, but you want to make sure, again, that you're understanding maybe over a um, three month time period or six months, how much you need to set aside so that you can pay for those utilities. Now, before I bought my home, what I did is I did a little research and I contacted the utility companies and I asked them, I said, well, on average, you know, what is the amount that I'll look to spend? I wanted to gauge in the winter time because of course in the winter time here, you're going to use a lot more heat, a lot more gas. And then also because I went from a 780 square foot apartment to almost a 1600, um, 1600 square foot home, I wanted to know as far as electric was concerned, how much could I anticipate spending? So if you're able to contact the, the utility companies and they're more than happy to share, they will give you the average and that way you know how much or approximately how much you can look to spend. All right, and then you have um, cable. So at the last apartment where I lived, cable was included. Um, with the rent. So I didn't have to pay any, well, basic cable was included. I didn't get any of the movies, but if you're anticipating um, moving into a home, you know, you're buying a home, um, it's pretty easy to figure out because when you're going in, you're shopping for a cable package, they'll show you everything that they offer and you'll want to just make sure you include that dollar amount in your budget. Okay, well, hey, that does it for the conservative budgeting. Um, and I believe if you utilize those tips that I just shared with you, you'll be able to live within your means. Um, you're taking care of your bills. You're setting some money to the side. And you may even end up having a surplus after you've taken care of all your responsibilities. And I will put those into a miscellaneous account. Now, I do want to create another video where I talk about having more than one savings account because I believe in setting aside separate savings accounts for specific activities or specific things that you're working towards. So that's another video for another time. All right, so if you have any other questions, feel free to comment below. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you'd like to see more or receive notifications when I'll have more videos, like I said, I'm going to get some collaborations and some really good um, some tax tips I think you'll really enjoy. Um, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And um, you can follow me on Instagram at happygirl underscore AK. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.